something here. We are the church. You, me, the church. That's us. So we're going to sing this as one. Are you ready to go? Okay. We're going to go crazy together. One, two, one, two, three. church let me hear you scream if you're excited to be here tonight all right y'all are excited if you are not excited get yourself excited right now because we're gonna have a great time we're gonna be ta be talking about stuck on you who do you think that you is talking about god that's right that's right so we're gonna be talking about that tonight but before we do i'm gonna go ahead and pray so we can commit this time to god so let's go ahead and bow our heads and close our eyeballs. If you don't know what bow means, that means you're just putting your head down like this. Just so you're not distracted, right? Like when someone's praying, you don't want to be talking. Okay. Father God, I come before you right now, and I just thank you for every single person in this room, Father. I just pray that everybody came hungry and ready to receive your word, Father God. We know that you have fresh word for us tonight, Father God. So we just right now commit these next few um, hours to you, Father God, and we just thank you that because we're expecting tonight, we're going to leave with something that we can put into our lives immediately, and I, we just thank you for it in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Now, if you do not have a Bible... You need one. So put your hand in the air so a team leader can come and get you one. Sasha, I can always count on you. Oh, Faithy, all right. So that's where we're going. It's Psalms, what did you say, 20? 27, 13 through 14. Okay, nope, so close your Bible. 
Okay. Okay, remember on Wednesdays, y'all are familia, right? Y'all are the family? We are gonna, we're gonna win against the Club 45, right? Do you think we can beat them to find the Bible verse? I believe in y'all guys, okay? Okay, so put it on your head. No bookmarks, Zoe. All right, ready, set, go. Hurry, hurry, hurry. It's on page, what page is up? Page 263, page 263. So if you're a little kid and you don't know how to find the words, find a two, a six, and a three. Hurry, 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 hurry. Oh, Major, good job. Hurry, hurry. A two, a six, and a three, Aaliyah and Amaya. Find a two, a six, and a three, hurry. Oh my goodness, Club 45 got it. Great job, Club 45. Now, don't close your Bibles. Because we want to look, we want to put our eyes on the word, right? So don't close your Bibles. We're going to say this together. I'm going to read it first. It says, I'm sure now I'll see God's goodness in the exuberant earth, exuberant, exuberant earth. Stay with God. Take heart. Don't quit. I'll say it again. Stay with God. Everybody say, stay with God. Okay, say it like, like how Pastor Kathy always says. Say it like you mean it. Stay with God. Right, that's such a big thing. Okay, now let's all say it together. Okay, and it's okay if you don't say the word right, because I messed up too, right? Okay, exuberant. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, ready? One, two, three. I'm sure now I'll see God's goodness in the exuberant earth. Take heart, don't quit. I'll say it again. Stay with God. All right, guys, now let's take a look at our word verse video. Stuck on you for all you do. Thank you for giving me a chance to choose you. Yeah, I'm confident that I will see you. I'll give my life and lay it down. That's all I can do. Yeah, I'll be strong and take heart, whatever the cost. Thank you for my sin that already has been washed. I love you, God, and I know that you're good. So every day I'ma do what I know I should. Now take heart. I won't quit because I'm stuck on you. my knees and i thank the father for his glory you're here when the sun comes up and when the sun comes down god you're always gonna be around you're my best friend my rock and my go-to like i said we are forever gonna stick on you
can that song like not hit Spotify or something? Because that's like a really good, it is? What? Okay, so guys, we are about to praise. But before I bring y'all up here, I just want y'all to remember, did y'all see in that video, like God was with them everywhere they went. So when you come down to this stage, guess what? He's right here. Don't you want to glorify him? Don't you want to praise him? So don't get distracted. Don't mess with your friends. If you're next to somebody that's messing around, move yourself from them, okay? Because this is your time to get your heart right so that you can receive the word right. So let's come down so that we can praise Jesus. Every day I choose Jesus, I will follow you Cause there's a world outside That can't seem to make up its mind It's saying this and that, that and this Everything's changing all the time You are the life, the truth, the way So I'll say Every day I'll choose Jesus, I will follow you Let everything I do Honor you every day I'll trust and obey Every word you say Cause I know, I know that you love me I'm following your way Every single day I wanna be who you want me to be You are the life, the truth
Yeah, where the love at? Picture these words as a Snapchat. Boomerang with the praise and the right back. Man, we hide in the sky, no turn back. If it be a last night, leave it all here. No fear, be clear, this is your year. Let go of anything that isn't God's steer. By Zine with the dream, man, it's so clear. Yeah, so clear. And you know, wherever you go, I'ma stick close, they gon' think we a duo. Bond so tight, hug it out like a sumo. And I never think twice, you the boss of my life, no, you go. And this world not down with us. They can try to limit faith, but it's down to us. Man, love so deep, not a game to us. When the blessing comes down, man, the praise go up. scriptures every day fill it out and turn it in for a prize growing every day by reading the word you can you can get your bible reading right now before service is over you can grab one before you leave but we have our bible reading drawing happening right now are y'all ready for the bible reading drawing this is the bible reading from last Last, right? This is, whoa, the winner is, all right, the winner is, drum roll, Creed Warren. Good job, Creed. You got you a DVD, some candy, some chips. It pays to read the word. All right, next, we have something very special. We had one person. Do the weekend challenge. So let's take a look at who did the weekend challenge and automatically gets the prize. Here we go. This is my weekend challenge, Psalms 27, 13 through 14. I'm sure now I'll see God's goodness in the X branch earth. Stay with God. Take heart. Don't quit. Stay. I'll say it again. Stay with God. Great job, Zoe! Give it up for Zoe. Do we have Zoe's prize? We have Zoe's prize. It's on the way right now. Jocelyn's running all over. You're awesome, Brianna. Great job, Zoe. Congratulations. All right, it is the beginning of the month. So we are going to be receiving communion a little bit later to just commit this whole month to the Father. But first, it is testimony time. Testimony time. Aaliyah, you can come on down if you have a testimony. And Maya, come on down, Maya. Yes, you're going to share that testimony. It was good. I didn't, but do you have one? Okay, you can come share it. All right, so we have a couple of testimonies. Who can tell me what a testimony is? Tristan? Hold on, let me let Tristan, because I can, I can only hear one person at one time. What'd you say, Tristan? Loud. Yes, something that God has done in your life that you want to share. So, True, you're up. Talk in the mic. It wasn't too recent and not too long ago, but I had been believing for $100 for my birthday. Yeah. And uh, one of my birthdays, I got it, and then the Holy Spirit told me to give it to Thomas, so I gave it to him. Oh, my gosh, that's so good. It's going to be, oh, wow, oh, wow. Aaliyah? So, um. His testimony is that you gave him $100. Yeah. So, when I lived with my grandma, um, one of my cousin's friends came over. Yeah. And then they, so, like, um, on, like, the side of the house where the sidewalk. Yeah. Um, there was, like, a big crack, and it was, like, up. And so she didn't um, pay attention, so she just 
skirt turning on the pack, mm. and so we had to help her go to the seat, yeah. and she couldn't move her leg at all, uh-huh. so I prayed over it, and it like started moving up. Praise the Lord. Good job. Maya, come up here. My dad ran over my duck, right? And I was really sad. So um, I prayed for uh, my duck to to stop crying. And I prayed over me to stop crying because Pastor Faith said there's no need to cry. And then for the whole day and for for my duck too, they did not cry at all. Even with a dead duck, right? That's right, because what will crying do? (laughs) That's standing... (laughs) That's my, that's my word I use for everything. <laughs> What's crying going to do? Nothing. Okay, go, Kayna. You're up. Um, I was ri- oh, I think they turned you off. Talk loud. Just kidding, they didn't. Um, I it? was relieving for a scooter, and when I went to my dad's Christmas party at his workplace, um, I got a scooter with lights on it. Praise the Lord. God is so faithful. And the thing is, is that he is so into every detail of your life. Look to your neighbor and say, God is in the details. From a scooter to a duck to a $100 bill. Thomas, you didn't have a testimony. But Oh, you did, but you forgot it. Okay. All right. Well, does anybody know what time it is? now am i on yeah okay i didn't know if the knob was on or not okay let's go in our bibles to malachi 3 remember we've been talking about the tithe which is so fitting because some people are walking away from it but say that won't be me the word is the word god lifted his word above his name so i'm not going to start taking out parts of the word now say devil you're too late And this verse right here is one of the main reasons why the enemy wants people to stop tithing. So let's go in our Bibles to Malachi 3, verse 11. Is everybody there? Malachi 3, verse 11. Remember, Abram tithed before it was even the law. Why did he tithe? Before it was even a part of the law, why did Abram tithe? Who can tell me? No? 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 He wanted to what? Honor God. Honor God. Good job. Sasha. Oh, get Sasha something. Candy. Candy. She wants candy. Okay, good. Bubble gum. I don't know if we have bubble gum, but we'll look. He wanted to honor God. Your tithe is your honor. It's literally, everyone say literally. It's literally the least we can do. Malachi 3, verse 11. Look what it says. It says, and I will rebuke the devourer. Do we have this on the screen? Do we have this verse? Who is the devourer? The enemy. Why does the enemy want people to stop tithing? Tithers have some major rights. And one of those rights is what? Uh, Are we okay on this switcher? Here we go. I will rebuke the devourer for your sake. It's like I don't even have to rebuke him. I'm so excited whenever I get to heaven after Jesus comes and gets us that I'm going to be able to look back and see all the time my tithe put in work for me. 
all the times the enemy was coming to steal, to kill, or destroy, but it did not work. Why? Because God said, I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes. So what is he not going to do? He will not destroy the fruit of my ground. That's me, that means I will always have a harvest. Nor shall the vine fail. I will always have a harvest. It will always bear fruit in the field, says the Lord of hosts. This is why the enemy is attacking the tithe. If it's in the word, I'm not going to make reasons to not do it. That's why I was getting my hair done in Orlando, and it was a new guy. He didn't know me, and he was asking me about um, food, and I said, I like cheese. And he, so he started talking about meat and cheese, and then he was like, and you compare it with this wine. This wine goes really good with this cheese. And I was like, I don't drink wine. And he was like, why? He knew I was a believer. He was like, why? Jesus drank wine. Jesus turned the water into wine. And I was like, you know, I'm not going to push the button on what the word of God says. It says, don't be drunk with wine, but be filled with the Holy Ghost. And so I'm not going to do it. But this is, what, this is what the world, this is what the enemy wants. Just push the line. I don't want to push the line of sin. I want to push the boundaries of the word of God. And I want to expect it to produce in my life. Like, I want to go all into this. Not some into this and then some in the world. And so that guy was like, well, okay, like, I like cheese and crackers without wine. I've never had wine. My lips have never tasted wine, and they won't taste wine. You know why? Because I know what alcohol does to people. My dad taught me. He said whenever he was, whenever he was um, younger, before he got saved and really turned on to God, he drank. And he said he hurt a lot of people. Why would I want to even dabble in something that could potentially hurt somebody? I'm not doing that. Why am I going to do that, right? Well, why would I not want the enemy rebuked on my behalf? Y'all, the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. The Bible says that he's roaming about seeking who he may devour. Guess what? Because I tithe, he cannot devour me. He cannot devour my seed. Even if the enemy comes in and tries to, to sow, um, you know, like bugs, like the canker worm or whatever, he tries to sow that, it will not touch my seed. Whatever the world does, whatever the system, the government does, it cannot touch my seed. Why? It all goes back to this verse. Because I do what? Malachi 3.10. Go to Malachi 3.10. Not just give. I give, but what else do I do? Malachi 3.10. Will you put it up? Malachi 3.10. Malachi 3.10. Because I do what? I tithe. And what is the tithe? 10%. Y'all, we've got to be more adamant about the word. This isn't what Pastor Faith says. This isn't what Pastor Dean and Pastor Kathy says. This is what the word says. And we're word people. Look to your neighbor and say, I'm word people. And because we're word people, we don't just hear the word Pastor Kathy taught us today in summer internship. What was the spiritual discipline, the last spiritual discipline? I don't just hear it, but I do it. We're going to do the word. So if you came prepared to give tonight, you have your tithes or your offerings, it is never too young, right? I'm going to be able to look back on my life from a young age to the older age and see how many times the devil was rebuked on my behalf. And I didn't have to lift a finger or even say a word. I just tithed. So if you're prepared to give, get it out. Sanctuary hosts, you can go ahead and get in your spots. We're going to give tonight. Sanctuary hosts, if you're a sanctuary host, get in your spot. Sanctuary host, please get in your spot. We're missing a sanctuary host. People help the people. Who's sanctuary host? Okay, thank you, Bella. You're awesome. All right, it's time for the bucket shuffle. The bucket shuffle. The bucket a shuffle. The bucket. Yo, shuffle, kid church. The bucket a mm -hmm. It's time to pass the bucket. Yeah, yeah, it's time to give. Time to give. Yeah, yeah, it's time to give, time to give. Yeah, yeah, it's time to give, time to give. Yeah, yeah, it's time to give, time to give. Yeah, yeah, it's time to give, time to give. Yeah, yeah, it's time to give, time to give. They say keep your money, but God says no. He says he will make rich the liberal soul. Make sure you give with a joyful soul. Now all of this church, let me see you on the floor. We got a brand new dance. It's time for you to trust him, a brand new dance. It's called the bucket shuffle. It don't matter if you're young or you're old. We gonna show you how it goes. To the right, to the right, to the right, to the right, to the left, to the left, to the left, to the left. Let's give, let's give, let's give, let's give. Now go on, praise the Lord. Now go on, praise the Lord. To the right, to the right, to the right, to the right, to the left, to the left, to the left, to the left. 
Let's give, let's give, let's give, let's give. Now go on, praise the Lord. Now go on, praise the Lord. All right. All right, everyone, bow your heads, close your eyes. I'm going to pray. And then we're going to get into a time of worship, and then we're going to receive communion. So everyone, bow your heads, close your eyes. You can go ahead and put your Bibles next to you. Put your notebooks next to you. I'm going to pray. And then we're going to worship. Father God, we come before you right now, and we just thank you for the opportunity that we have to give. God, we're so grateful for your word. We thank you that every promise in your word is yes and amen. And we are doers of your word. So we thank you, Father God, that because we are tithers, the enemy will be rebuked. We have tithers' rights. Our harvest will come to pass. We will see our harvest quickly accelerate it in Jesus' name. We thank you that this is good ground. I thank you that as we sowed into this ground, we're sowing into your kingdom, but we're also making way for more seed to come our way, and we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Everyone says? Amen. Amen. All right, let's come down front. Let's lift our hands, close our eyes, and let's worship God tonight. Took my place, laid inside my tomb of sin. You were buried for three days, but then you walked right out again. And now death has no sting, and life has no end. For I have been transformed by the blood of the Lamb. Thank you. 
We worship you, God. We're going to receive communion right now. I apologize. I'm really cold. Come back to your seats quietly. Head back to your seats quietly. I'm going to read a verse. And then we're going to receive communion. First Corinthians 11, verse 24. That's where we're going to start. Everyone get to your seats. I'm going to read this verse, and we're going to pass out communion, and I'm going to pray, and we're going to receive it. First Corinthians, if you have a Bible, I would go there. I would highlight it. First Corinthians 11, 24. It says this. When he had given thanks, he being Jesus, he broke it, and he said, he broke the bread, and he said, take, eat. Will you turn down the music? Take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner, he took the cup. When he drank it, he said, this cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do, and as often as you drink, do it in remembrance of me. If you're talking, I'm going to ask you to leave because I'm not messing with that today. Okay? I've been around 88 kids all day. I had actually 200. 200 kids all day. Okay? And if you don't respect the word, if you don't respect the word, and it's going to make it really difficult for you to receive the word. Therefore, you're wasting your time. Jesus said, do this and remember. Why did he say remember? Why do you think he said remember? So we know what he did for us, yeah? What are some things that can, that can happen that will cause you to forget? What Jesus did. Kaden? Oh, playing video games? Distractions? Yeah, Briley? Being around the wrong people? That can get you to forget about the blood? Hearing the wrong things? What else? Luke? No? Bella? You too. Just watching stuff you shouldn't watch. Bree? Watching movies that that's bad. Watching movies, it's bad. Clouding your mind with a bunch of other stuff. So Jesus said, do this and remember. Sasha, do you have one? What? Death of a family member. Death of a family member, right? What about symptoms in your own body? Things that happen. Maybe your parents fighting. What are all those things? Where do all those things come from? Did they come from God? No, they come from the enemy. And so Jesus said, hey, this is my body that's broken so you don't have to be broke. This is my blood that's shed so you can have real life. You can have prosperity. You can have healing. Jesus said, remember this. When every other voice is loud, remember this. When the symptom is loud, remember this. When the parents are fighting, remember this peace that I've given you. Because when you remember this and you think about this, what does the Bible say in Isaiah 26, 3? It says, whenever he will keep me in perfect peace, when my mind is fixed on him. Fixed on him. So I need to remember him. I can't afford to forget about the blood. I can't afford to forget about the body that was beaten for me. You know why? Because then I'll be broke, I'll be sick, I'll be disgusted, I'll be depressed if I forget this. Say, I can't forget this. Have you ever been going on a trip and it's like, okay, I cannot forget my swimsuit, or I cannot forget those shoes, or I cannot forget. Have you ever had that one thing? Some of you, when you go to Fire Week, it's like, I cannot forget my toothbrush, okay? So I'll remember that. <laughs> I can't forget deodorant, okay? Let's not forget that. Right? I can't forget that. I can't afford to forget it. Because if I forget that, then I'm going to get there, and my breath's going to be funky, 
My armpits are going to be stinky. It's going to be bad. If I forget this, that's what my life's going to be. And I'm a carrier of the presence of God. But that presence will never be seen in my life if I'm not thinking about this, if I'm not focused on this. So I'm going to pray. And whatever area of your life where the enemies tried to use to get you forget about this, whether it be people in your family, maybe that have passed away, like, like Sasha says, maybe somebody that was sick or yourself that was sick or parents fighting or maybe something to do with money in your home, whatever the enemy's trying to get you to think about, you're going to say, you know what, I'm going to forget that and I'm going to remember this. I want you to be intentional about forgetting that and remembering this. So I'm going to pray and then we're going to receive. So everyone bow your heads, close your eyes. Agree with me in prayer. Father God, we come before you right now. And we thank you for Jesus. We are so grateful that we are now a part of your family because of Jesus. We thank you for the blood that was shed for us, the life that was given so that we can have life here on earth and then life eternally with you. God, we're so grateful that you did what we could never do. You paid the price that we can never pay. We're so grateful, God, for the blood of Jesus. We thank you that life is in that blood. We thank you that health is in that blood. Prosperity is in that blood. And that blood has been given to us. So we plead the blood right now over our body. We plead the blood right now over our families, over our finances, over our health. We plead the blood. And we know that that blood goes to work and drives out anything that doesn't belong and draws to whatever does belong. We thank you for the body of Jesus that was broken. We thank you for the body of Jesus that was rejected. God, because he was rejected, we can be accepted. We thank you for the body that took on every foul thought. We choose to think good thoughts. Just like Philippians says, we think on those things that are true, that are holy, because Jesus already paid the price for us to be free from any negative thought. We forget those things of the world. We forget what the enemy's trying to remind us of, and we remember Jesus right now. Everyone say, I remember Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. Go ahead and receive your communion. Forgiveness is in the blood. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father, for forgiveness, for freedom. All right, the buckets are going to be passed. Throw your trash. Once the communions are passed, everyone get out your Bible. We're going to get into the Word. Let's go in our Bibles to Psalms 27. We've already gone there. Psalms 27. Psalms 27. We're talking all month long about sticking with God. Sticking with God. Psalms 27, 13. You know, you're going to be stuck to some things. Every day you're either stuck to you, stuck to the past, stuck to the flesh, or you're stuck to God. And every moment of every day you make a decision to stick with him. Just like in our Bible reading, what you've been doing every day, you've been filling out how are you going to stick with God today. Because the enemy, the flesh, what does it come to do? It comes to pull on you so you unstick from him and stick to something else. So like when there's when there's strife, you and your brother, you and your sister are fighting. What is the enemy trying to get you to do? Unstick from him and stick to what? Stick to fear, stick to frustration. Right? And if I if I keep going from him to strife, him to strife, him to strife, 
What happens to that duct tape? Deep students, we've done that before. Remember, I stuck it on all this stuff, and then it wouldn't stick on Ryan. What happens? What does it lose? It loses its stickiness. And this is what happens to a lot of believers. They're stuck on God, but then when a situation happens, they unstick and stick to the situation. Whenever things go on, they unstick from him, and they stick to their own willpower. They stick to their own way of doing things. When a friend hurts their feelings, they stick to gossip. When, a, when, someone, when their parents are fighting, they stick to fear. And if you constantly unstick and stick and unstick and stick, then eventually, like, you lose your stick. It's harder and harder for you to grip. How many of y'all have ever tried to make something stick, and it's just, like, barely hanging on? It's like the duct tape or the tape is barely there. And, like, you push it and you push it and you push it, but it's just, like, barely hanging on. I don't want to be barely hanging on. I want to stick with God. I want all that God is to be seen in my life, but that's going to require me to stick with him. So we're talking about sticking with God. There's three areas we're going to be talking about this week, this month, I mean, in attitude, in actions, and thoughts. If you're taking notes, you can write that down. I will stick with God in attitude, in actions, and in thoughts. Attitude, actions, and thoughts. Attitude, actions, and thoughts. I will stick with God in attitude, thank you, Jay, attitude, actions, and thoughts. You have to choose that, because just coming to church, guess what? Big whoop. Do you know who else showed up to church tonight? The devil did. So news flash, no gold star. You have to stick with God in every decision, every moment of every day. You come to church, you hear the word, and then what? What was the last spiritual discipline Pastor Kathy taught us today in summer internship? You don't just hear it, you what? You do it. Do what the word says. Verse 13 says this. I had fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait on the Lord or stick with the Lord. Be of good courage and he shall strengthen your heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Let's read it from the message translation. It says this. I'm sure now I'll see God's goodness in the exuberant earth. Stay with God. Take heart. Don't quit. I'll say it again. Stay with God. I cannot afford to get into frustration. I cannot afford to get into sadness. I can't afford it. Because every time I get out of the word and into my feels, I'm unsticking from my supply. I'm unsticking from my source. And if I'm not stuck to my source, I'm vulnerable to a bunch of other stuff. If I had, do we have a roll of duct tape? If I had a piece of tape and it was like stuck on something and I ripped it off and then I just walked around everywhere I went, I got in the shower, I went to school, I did my schoolwork, I stuck it on my desk and then unstuck it. What potentially at the end of the day, it's like that commercial with the blanket, the little kid, have y'all ever seen it? Where the little kid takes his blanket everywhere and then at the end of the day it's like covered in dirt cause, and the mom has to take it while the kid's napping and whatever. What potentially is going to be on that piece of tape? Everything. I need some specifics. Ooh. Ooh, Where do you play? Okay, dirt. Crusty hair. Trash. Pencil shavings. Ooh, that's a good one because you're at school. Toenails. Uh Uh-huh. I am never playing with y'all. Dead skin. Blood. You cut yourself on the playground, then you got blood. Or worse, your friend cut themselves on the playground. Uh. What? Oh, you said ew. Zarek. Teeth? Yeah, Zarek lost a tooth. Okay, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Wait a minute. Hold on, a booger, yeah. Zarek just said teeth, because you know why? He just lost a tooth. Zarek, did you lose it yesterday or today? When was it? I don't remember when you told me. It was Sunday. Yesterday, imagine. Ooh, a lot of germs. Zaylin? Ants, bugs, right, Bella? Stickers. Y'all, whenever this isn't stuck to where it needs to be stuck... It's vulnerable to a bunch of other things. Even things that, like, I never wanted to stick on. 
That's why it's so important. See, whenever I unstick from God, just because I may think, well, it's not a big deal. You know, I'm just frustrated or I'm just going through some stuff. No, I'm vulnerable. If I'm not stuck to him, I'm completely vulnerable to whatever the enemy has. And y'all, the enemy never travels alone. So whenever I unstick from God because I got in a fight with my brother, I'm not just vulnerable to strife. I'm vulnerable. The Bible says that where strife is, so is every evil work. So I am vulnerable. What are some evil works? Strife, obviously. Sasha. Selfishness. Now I'm going to be selfish. Zoe. Carnality. Carnality. Right? Doing what I feel like doing. I'm vulnerable to it all. But I'm a Christian. But what did I do? I'm not stuck on him. So I'm vulnerable. Zoe. Sorry. Pride. Pride. Ooh. Breland, sin, Zora, being carnal, Caden, we got Michael Jackson up here. Death. 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 Do you know that I've, I've known young people that like that was the first party and they didn't come out of the party alive. That was the first time speeding, drinking and driving and they didn't come out of the car alive. It was the only time. It, it only took one time. What happens when I unstick from him, when I unstick from his word, I'm going to give all of y'all a piece of duct tape tonight to stick on your word. Whenever I unstick from him, I'm vulnerable to everything that is opposed to him. I have to stay with God. Look what the verse says one more time. What did David say? And y'all, David was someone that had experience. I'm sure now I'll see God's goodness in the exuberant earth. Stay with God. Take heart. Don't quit. I'll say it again, stay with God. Why was David so adamant? Like, why did he say it twice? Why did he encourage us twice to stay with God? What had he seen in his life, the result of unsticking from God and doing his own thing? Zoe? Death. Death, but how death? What did David see in his life? He unstuck from God and stuck to who? Hello. Bathsheba. She stuck with, he stuck with Bathsheba. And then what happened? The son died. The son was after him. The son started trying to take his place, his kingdom. The son got kingdom. caught by um, his hair. The son got caught by his hair, hung him on self. Why was David so adamant? He knew. He knew what happened. Oh, well, that'll never happen to me. Yes, it will. Yes, it will. The wages of sin is what? Death and anything that is not of faith, believing, speaking, doing the word of God, what is that? It is sin. Worry is sin. You unstick from him and worry, you're vulnerable to everything the enemy has. We have to stick with God. Well, what does that mean? That means sticking with his word. Sticking with the word in our attitude, in our actions, and in our thoughts. Say, I'm going to stick with God. Not just come to church. We need to come to church. The Bible says that's sticking with God. The Bible says do not forsake the fellowship of, of yourselves together. Even more so as it gets closer to Jesus coming back. Sticking with God is coming to church. But that's not going to be the only thing that gets it done. When you leave church, guess what you got to do? You got to stick with God. You still got to stick with him. When a TV show comes on and you know you shouldn't watch it, guess what? You can't unstick and just think, oh, it's okay. No one's around. I can watch this. No, who's starting to jump on all over your tape? The enemy. And he comes to do what, according to John 10, 10? Still kill and destroy. So I let a defeated devil wreak havoc in my life all because of my unwillingness just to stick with God. Y'all, it doesn't pay. It doesn't pay. It doesn't pay. The wages of sin. Do you know what sin will pay your life? Death. You know, have you ever heard of maybe your parents, they work for a certain amount of, of days and then what do they get at their job? They get a paycheck, right? So they did the hours and they get a paycheck. And what is that paycheck? It turns in, it's money, right? Guess what? Whenever you sin, the devil, it might be two weeks later, it might be a month later, but he always pays. And do you know what he pays you? Do you think he pays you in money? No, he pays you in death. Death to your peace, death to your finances, death to your health. Death to your, your clarity, death. That's how he pays. And he always pays. Everyone say, he always pays. 
He always pays. That's why you can't afford. That's why if you unstick, let's say you have a bad attitude. You unstick, what do you need to be quick to do? What? Stick back on. How do I do that, though? Repent. First John 1, 9. Confess your sin. He's fa- Don't try to cover your sin. You try to cover your sin, and guess what's all up on? Hair. What? <laughs> I thought you said hair. Shame. Death, right? Fear. Insecurity. And then you gotta, you got to act all prideful like you didn't do anything wrong. No, I've got to repent. Everyone say repent. And i got to stay with God. Because David knew. David knew, you know what? Stick with God. Because David saw it. That's what's so crazy. Like David saw the power of God work in his life. When everyone else was hiding from Goliath, what did David do? He said, I'll go. And then he talked mess to him. He said, you uncircumcised Philistine, you come at me with a sword, but I come at you in the name of the Lord God. And today he's going to show you that he is real. And he whipped around that rock and it hit Goliath in the head and he was dead. He went and cut his head off and carried his head to the camp. David did that. But that same David that saw the amazing work of God, guess what he did? He unstuck. And he gave in. He gave in to that woman, right? And then what happened? Death, death of the little boy. There was all of this awful sin, perversion. Perversion, right? You reap what you sow. Perversion in his house. And then his, his, son, his son died, just like y'all said. Y'all, it's not worth it. Say, it's not worth it. When you stick with God, you walk in an abundant life. And y'all, as it gets closer to Jesus walk, um, coming back, there's going to be a lot more that once walked with God that aren't. That's the bottom line. And it doesn't matter what anyone else does. You have to decide for you, as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. We're going to honor the word of God. We're going to do whatever it takes to stay with what the word of God says. We're going to be led by the spirit. We're going to hear his voice. We're going to spend time every day feasting on the word of God. Why? Because as it gets closer to Jesus coming back, this is what's going to happen. And Jesus said it. Go in your Bibles to Matthew. I gave you all the wrong. I did Hebrews. I don't even, Hebrews 10, 12 wasn't right. Matthew 24. Jesus is talking here. Matthew 24. 12 through 26 is what we're going to read. Matthew 24. I need a different translation. You have a what? What do you have, baby? Is it New King James? Can I use yours, though? Hey, that might be good, too. But let me use this one. Close to the king. All right. 2412. Let me see if it says what I want it to say. Say what it needs to say. It does. Okay, verse 12. Are you all there? I've got to stick with God. Everyone say I gotta stick with God. Tell your neighbor, I've got to stick with God. Y'all, you don't stick with God, you're vulnerable. Okay, you're vulnerable to the devices of the enemy. And y'all, he's been defeated. It's like you give him, you give him an open door into your life. When Jesus literally bled out, so the door never had to be open again. It's not worth it. It's not worth it. Say it's not worth it. Frustration is not worth it. Insecurity is not worth it. The moment a thought comes of insecurity, oh, well, you know, Zoe's got those cool vans. The moment it comes, you have to turn that around and shut the door on that noise and say, no, my God supplies all my needs, and he gives me the desires of my heart. If it's a desire for me to have some cool vans like Zoe, he's going to give me some cool vans like Zoe. I'm not going to be jealous of her. I'm not going to be insecure. But you have to choose. Y'all, because every time, every time you unstick, you're vulnerable. It's not worth it. It's not worth it. Y'all, we all serve the same God. And if you're in here and you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life, I'm going to give you an opportunity to do that. But God loves you. And just like, have y'all ever heard the story of whenever the man, he he had a field. And he needed work done in his field. And there was some people in the morning, he went to the market. And there was some people that came and they worked. So let's say like Briley, Kaya, and Ryan, y'all come. You came first thing in the morning. Oh, it's time to work. Okay, so y'all come. And what are y'all ready to do? Work. Y'all are ready to work in the field. All right, I'm going to give y'all each $5 for working in the field. All right, so go to the field. 
just stand there. Act like you're working in the field. Okay? So then it's like, oh, gosh. I, hold on. Go all the way over. Go all the way over. Go all the way over. Is that in? Oh, gosh. I got a big old field. So do you know what that means? I need a lot of workers. And so I need, I need Truly, I need Zay, and I need Zoe. Y'all need to come and work. Now, it's already noon. They got to work at like 9, okay? 9 o'clock, they've been working, okay? They've been putting in work. Hey, guys, are y'all, what are y'all here to do? Work. They're here to work, too. Well, guess what I'm going to do? For your work today, I'm going to give you all $5. So y'all can go ahead and head to the field and get your work on. Yep, work, work, work. Okay, gosh, my field is huge. And, like, I was really hoping to get the harvest done today, right? Today. Y'all are loud workers. Y'all need to calm down. Work a little bit quieter. Okay, so I got, I need Tristan, I need Sierra, and I need Bella. It's already 6 o'clock. Guys, hold, wait, hold up. I know you're excited. It's already 6 o'clock, and we're going to stop working. Hey, workers, we're going to stop working at about 9, okay? We're going to stop. So y'all have just only about three hours left of work to do. But I'm really excited that you're here. What are you here to do? Work. work. Okay, I'm going to give you all $5 for your work. So go ahead and go work. So these workers went and worked. So they're working, 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 working. And then the bell rings. All right, guys, work is over. So first workers, you're going to come up. Here you go. Here's your $5. Thank you so much. Stay right here. Stay close. Here's your $5. Oh. Here's your $5. Thank you so much for working. Here you go. Here's your $5. Here's your $5. Here's your $5. Come on down. Come on down. Here's your $5. Here's your $5. Here's your $5. Well, then Jesus said that there was some workers at the beginning. So you three, who are the first three? Y'all come up, and y'all are just salty. And guess what you're salty about? You're salty about the fact that what? You worked longer, and they got $5. But see, God is a just God. God is a faithful God. Y'all, if you cry out to God the last moment of the day, right before you die, everything that a believer had if they got saved at the beginning belongs to you. Do you understand that, how good God is? So these guys were salty, and he's like, well, what, what's the deal? Why are you mad? You agreed to the $5. You agreed to $5. So that's why all of you got $5, because what did you all do? You all did the work. So go home with your $5, and guess what I'm probably not going to do? Ask y'all again. I'm going to ask the other ones because they were nice. Now give it up for all of my workers. Now, I said, all, I said all that to say, God is not holding anything back from you. Do you understand? As a child of God, you have access to all of heaven. There are no levels. Do you understand? Willow, Piper, sorry. Piper has access to the same heaven that I have access to. Now, what's going to be the difference between me accessing it and you accessing it? What's going to make the difference? You working it. You working the word. But we all have access. We all have the same access. And as it gets closer to Jesus coming back, we have to begin to tap in to the supernatural flow of heaven. Why? Because people are dying and going to hell. And they don't need to die and go to hell on my watch. And people are looking to the church for hope, for rescue. And the church can't be all acting weird and acting shady and compromising the word. Otherwise, they're not going to be any help to a lost and a dying world. Do you understand? So God has given us all access, but we have to choose it. That's why I'm going to stick with God. I'm going to stick with God. And it doesn't matter what anyone else does. I'm going to stick with God. Look what Jesus said in Matthew 24, verse 12. Look what he said. And because lawlessness, oh, let me go up more. The signs of the times. He sat at the Mount of Olives. The disciples came to him and said, tell us when these things will be. And what will be the sign of your coming and of the end of the age? Say we're, we're really close to the end. I don't know if it's going to be years or months, but we're at the end. Do you understand? We're at the end. And look what Jesus said. He said to them, take heed that no one deceives you. There's going to be a lot of deception, and it's going to be deception about the word. That's why Pastor Dean for years has always said, you read the word. You read the word. Don't just take my word for it. You read the word. But guess what? A lot of believers don't, and then they just blame Pastor Dean, or they blame another pastor. But that's what the word says. He said a lot of people are going to deceive. 
What does it mean to deceive? To be what? To lie, to be lied to. Jesus answered, take heed that no one deceives you. For many, say many. Selah, turn around, baby. Selah, turn around, baby. And Kennedy and Derek, sit up. I love you. But the presence of God is in the room. And he deserves your attention. It's not for me. It's for him. He's in the room. The word says, where two or more are gathered, I'm right there. Y'all, he's right here. Do you understand? He's right here. And he wants to give you a deposit that you need for the rest of the week or at least until Sunday. He has something for you. And that demands your attention. It demands your respect. Y'all, we can't take this lightly anymore. It might have worked last year. It might have worked, you know, when Corona and we're all like, yeah, we're still having church. But like, we got to get serious. Okay, Jesus is coming back. People are dying and going to hell. People need hope. And Jesus is the hope of the world. And we have to access that by the word of God. So look what it says. He said, they'll come in my name saying, I'm the Christ and will deceive many. I'm the anointed one. And you'll hear of wars and rumors of wars, which we've heard, right? The war in Ukraine, other stuff going on. See that you're not troubled. Say, I won't be troubled. Say, I won't be shaken. I won't be in fear. Why? Because fear is doing what? It's unsticking from God and making yourself vulnerable, right? Well, I'm afraid. Okay, well, then you're vulnerable to a lot of stuff. I've got to stay stuck with him. I know I'm going to flip the Bible. <laughs> Jesus' name. I don't want to rip it. It says, be sure that you're not troubled. For all these things, say all these things, must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation will rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom, and there will be famines, pestilences, and earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Then they will deliver you up to tribulation and kill you. And you'll be hated by all nations for, nine, for my name's sake. That's why you can't be a people pleaser. Okay? Because like, you better get ready. If you're going to stand for the word, guess what people are going to do? They're going to hate you. People are going to hate you. They're going to talk mess about you. Oh, well, then I just won't say that. Well, I just won't talk about that. No, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to preach the word of God. Because the word is anointed. The word is powerful. The word is what someone needs. Guess what? If Baylor's offended with me or she hates me, if I stop saying the word, well, what about Breland? What if Breland was hungry and I stopped saying the word because Baylor hated me? Now what happens? Breland misses out. I'm not doing that. You hate me? Hate me. Touch not God's anointed. <laughs> Touch me. I'm going to keep preaching the word of God. Why? Because this is what they're going to do. I have to be prepared for this. So if you have soft skin, do you know what I mean? Like if you're constantly crying about people not liking you, people saying stuff about you, you better buck up because there's going to be people that are saying stuff that it's like, whoa, didn't they falsely accuse Jesus? What did they say of Jesus? He's blasphemous. He said he's going to do this. He's turning people against this. And what did Jesus do? <laughs> These things are not true. I'm going to tell them something. Did he say that? No, he said nothing. He said nothing. He let him spit in their face. And then the last words he said is, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. They don't know what they're doing. This is going to happen. So why do I need to stick with God? Because these things are going to happen. And he's my power source. He's my source of peace. He's my source of strength. If everyone else, the Bible even says, if father and mother reject you, I will not. I accept you. That's why I'm sticking with him. Are you saying I don't stick with my parents? I'm saying you stick with the word. You stick with him. And all of you have amazing parents that you can stick with that are sticking with God too. But if push comes to shove and they stop, you got to still stick with God. Because it's not worth you losing out on your call because your parents flaked. You have to stick with God. Say, I'm going to stick with God. Because at the end of your life, you will not stand there with your parents. They will not be there with you. It will just be you and him. And you want to be able to look in his face and say, yeah, they left. Yeah, they were mad that I was serious but I stuck with you. And what is he going to say? Enter into glory, you good and faithful servant. You stick with him. Say, I'm going to stick with him. Y'all, if they threaten to kill me, if they threaten, if they threaten to, to take everything from me, I'm sticking with him. I'm sticking with him. What matters at all in this earth compared to what I have access to in heaven? What I'm going to get to enjoy in heaven? Nothing. Nothing. Nothing compares to heaven. So I'm sticking with him. That means I'm not going to allow fear. I'm not going to allow frustration. And the moment I allow it, I'm going to be quick to say what? Father, forgive me. That was wrong. Holy Spirit, help me. I am not going to open the door anymore to that. 
The devil is not going to use that same thing to get me anymore. I'm going to fast. I'm going to consecrate. I'm going to spend more time. I'm going to surrender, praying in the Holy Spirit, whatever it is. Why? Because I've got to stick with him. As the world gets darker, I've got to get brighter. Well, you only get brighter when, you, when you're next to the light. Who's the light? He is. Jesus. Jesus is the light. He goes on to say this. They will deliver you up. There will be many offended. They'll betray one another. They'll hate one another. Then many false prophets will rise up and deceive many. And because lawlessness, that means doing what you want to do, will abound, the love of many will grow cold. But he who endures to the end shall be saved. And this gospel, say this gospel, will be preached in all the world as a witness to all nations. And then the end will come. But guess what? I got to be the one. I got to be the one that refuses to grow cold. Do you know what happens to cold duct tape? Will you get that out of the freezer? I don't know if it's been in there long enough. But I want y'all to do this experiment at home. Get a piece of duct tape and put it in the freezer like overnight or a couple days, some hours, and see what happens. What do you think happens to duct tape? It's not going to stick anymore. Why? Are you coming? Look over here. Look over here. It's cold. It's frozen. Whatever sticky moisture there was, now it's frozen. It's solid. This one's probably a little still sticky. Look, there's one little piece over here that's like, it wouldn't stick at all. There's ice. There is ice. But it's not sticky anymore. You see how I'm doing this? Look, this is just a regular piece. Oh, gosh, now my hand's cold. <laughs> this one. This one doing nothing. This is nothing. Do you understand? This one's sticky. Sticky on me. Okay? This one, not sticky on me. This one's not doing it. What happens? What happens when it's cold? It doesn't stick. If I don't do the word, guess what? I will become cold. Well, I'm coming to church. Well, you know, I serve on the praise team, so I'm, I'm pretty good. No, are you spending time with him? The Bible says meditate on the word day and night. The Bible says bring your tithes and bring your offerings. The Bible says pray for those who are not right to you. Right? Pray for your enemies. Like, I don't want to do just some of the gospel. I want to do all of the gospel because I can't afford to just be stuck to him in some areas of my life and not stuck to him because eventually what happens? This will pull on that. Do you understand that? The power of darkness will pull on that. I don't want to get in a tug of war with my flesh. I don't want to get in a tug of war with the enemy. I want to stand firm. I want to stay stuck to him. Look what it says in verse 13. He who endures to the end will be saved. Y'all, the end is coming, and I have to stick with God. I have to stick with him. Did y'all hear all those things that are going to happen? They're going to happen. And the Bible even says that there's only 20% that will still be stuck. Don't you want to totally blow that statistic or that number out of the water? Do you know what 20% of you is? What would it be, Craig? 20% of the kids in the room. How many are there? 71. Seven kids? 14 kids? 14 kids. Stand up. Oh, these? Stand up. Do 20. All y'all sit down. I apologize. That's 14. Sit down, Samaya. This is what, this is what statistics say. This many, out of all of y'all, will be the only ones still with it after high school. Say, so that will not be me. Y'all, I want to stand before God, not standing before him, barely. Like, I want to be standing before him, like with the trail of people that I was called to minister to. With the trail of blessings that I sowed into the kingdom. With the trail of health. With the trail of good news. That's what I want to stand before him with. Not like, oh, something that's going to catch on fire and burn up. But guess what? That is going to require something. Being one of these, that's going to require something. I'm going to have to stick with him and not just coming to church. Y'all, that's good. You got to come to church. That's what the Bible says. But sticking to him in my attitude, in my actions, and then in my thoughts. I've got to stick with him. Say, I've got to stick with him. And y'all, if you find yourself tomorrow, even tonight, tonight, tomorrow, Friday, Saturday, Sunday morning before you come to church, if you find yourself doing something that's contrary to this, 
you repent. And if it's something that you constantly have to be repenting for, then you need to fast. You need to make some aggressive changes. You need to let your flesh know that we're not playing this game anymore. Because Jesus is coming back. Didn't I just read it? There'll be people that are deceived. And guess who's going to be the first believers deceived? The ones who aren't stuck. The ones that aren't stuck. Who are going to be the first ones that are picked off? The cold ones. The ones that aren't stuck. I want to be stuck with him. I want you to bow your heads and close your eyes. Will you make sure, get a different color so that every kid can get one of these. And if you have a Bible, I want you to stick it on your Bible. Keep it with you. Let's see how long it can stay on your Bible. I'm going to put a piece on mine. I want to encourage you right now. If there's something that you haven't dealt with, I want you to listen. If there's something you haven't dealt with, you know there's an area of your life where you're not sticking with him. You have unforgiveness in your heart. You have strife with a brother or sister. You have fear about your family. Y'all, anything that's contrary to the word of God. The Bible says anything not of faith, believing, speaking, doing the word is sin. If you've allowed anything to be what you're stuck to instead of him, I'm going to pray with you right now. So if that's you, you know, I've been stuck to some stuff. I haven't dealt with it. This thing that the Holy Spirit told me to do, I haven't done it. Or I've been walking in unforgiveness or offense towards this person. I want you to stand up right now, and I'm going to lead you in a prayer. And tonight, you're going to say, okay, that was the night. I asked God to forgive me, and I restuck. I restuck to him. And you're going to commit to not unstick again. Well, I don't think I can do it. You can. You've been given power over sin. You've been given power and authority. You don't have to sin. You've been given power over sin, and you can walk in that power. I want you to lift your hands to heaven. I want you to repeat this prayer after me. Say, Father God, you know the area where I've become unstuck. You know what I've stuck myself to. Whether fear, insecurity, pride, unforgiveness, strife, negativity, hurt, sadness, you know what it is. And I judge it as wrong. I remember right now the price Jesus paid so I can be free from that. So I ask you to forgive me for falling for the lie of the enemy. From this night on, I'm sticking with you. Holy Spirit, help me do what I know to do. I commit to stick with you. I'm sticking with you, God. No matter what, people aren't my problem. The government's not my problem. My parents aren't my problem. My brother or sister aren't my problem. I don't have a problem, God, because I have you. Thank you for your forgiveness. I forgive myself for what I did. And I'm going to move forward tonight. Free. I'm free. Say, I'm free. Say, I'm free. I'm free, and I'm sticking with you. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, go ahead and have a seat. But if you're in here right now and you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life, if you're already saved, I want you to be praying in the Holy Spirit. The Bible says that it's the goodness of God that draws men to repentance. So if the goodness of God is trying to draw people to repentance and you're talking, guess what? It's going to be a little distracting. So pray in the Holy Spirit, just right there at your seat. But if you're in here and you've never said the prayer of salvation, the Bible says that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. The prayer of salvation is believing in your heart and confessing with your mouth that Jesus is Lord. Jesus came to this earth as a little baby. He lived a sinless life. He died on the cross and he paid the price. Say he paid the price. But in order for you to walk in all that he provided, you have to accept him as the Lord of your life. And you don't have to do it over and over again. You just have to do it and mean it from your heart. So if that's you, you've never said that prayer before. You've never accepted Jesus as the Lord of your life and you want to say it tonight. If you would, just come right down front and I'm going to pray it with you. If you've never said that prayer before and you want to say it tonight, I want to pray it with you. Come down front, lift your hands to heaven. We're going to say this prayer together. 
everyone else just be praying in the Holy Spirit. If you're already saved and you're not filled with the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues and you're sitting in your seat, I would encourage you to close your eyes and say, God, I accept the gift of the Holy Spirit. And it'll begin to bubble up on the inside and you'll pray in tongues. But if you've never said that prayer, I want you to say it right now. Say it from your heart. And from this moment on, say from this moment on, I'm a child of God. You have nothing to fear. You're a child of God. All right, repeat this after me. Say, Father God, thank you for sending Jesus to die on the cross just for me. I believe that he died and he rose again. And right now, I make him Lord of my life. My sins are washed away. My past is forgiven. And my future is bright. Thank you, God, for making me a part of your family. In Jesus' name, amen. Father God, I thank you for each of these kids. I thank you that you're, they're blessed. I thank you, Father God, that they realize that they are called, that they are chosen for such a time as this. I thank you, Father God, that they realize how valuable. Can I get some helpers? I'm sorry. I just need some helpers because we're not going to have the same thing happen. If they're going to fall, I need a catcher. Thank you, Father God, that they realize how valuable they are. I thank you, Father God, that they never turn away from you. I seal them by the Holy Spirit right now. And I thank you, Father God, that they belong to you. I thank you, Father, that they are yours. They will never taste or experience the ravages of sin, but they will be free from sin. They will live pure lives, holy lives that bring glory and honor to you. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, give them a hand. We want you to go right over there to Miss Julie. If you made Jesus the Lord of your life, and if you said that prayer online with me for the very first time, please email us at infokids at choosewifehobs.com. Now, everyone else, give it up for Miss Brianna. All right, guys. Wasn't that a great message? Let me hear you scream if that was a good message. Okay, now let me hear you scream even louder if you're going to apply it to your life. Good, good. All right, guys. Now, if you borrowed a Bible, everybody needs to be in your seat. If you're not with Miss Julie and you just got saved, then everybody else needs to be in your seat, please. Okay, and if you borrowed a Bible from church tonight, go ahead and put it in the air so a team leader can come and pick it up. Club 45, can y'all help pick up Bibles, please? Bible right here, baby. Thank you. Uh, the birthday girl's getting the Bible for the birthday girl. Happy birthday, girls. <laughs> okay, guys. Now, I want you to look under your seat. Do you have trash under your seat? Okay. If you're sitting in chairs, there's chairs in front of you. Look under that chair. Is there trash there? Okay, we're going to put a minute on the board. All that trash needs to go to the trash can. Ready, set, go. No brooms. Elena, come to the stage, please. Elena.
You got five seconds to get in your seat. Hurry, hurry. Two seconds, one second. Hurry, hurry, hurry. Go to your seat. Hurry, hurry, hurry. All right, guys. Someone's going to walk around to see who, which row is the cleanest. Let's see which row is the cleanest. How about while you're waiting, remember we have to be quiet, but while you're waiting, look under your chair and see, did you miss anything? Oh, I see some people did miss some things. Okay. Miss Jaden, are you going to check whose row is the cleanest? Let's do whose row is the cleanest and the quietest. So that means stop talking. I think they have a lot of duct tape. You need duct tape on your mouth? Ooh. No. No. Okay, stay quiet, but raise your hand if you're in summer internship. Okay, put your hands down. Raise your hand if you see Miss Jaden taped to a pole yesterday. Wasn't that so cool? Were they? Oh my goodness. Okay, now, if you're in summer internship, let me hear you scream if you're ready for tomorrow. Oh, all right, all right, all right. Hey. All right, Miss Jaden just told me, listen, she just told me who had the cleanest row. Raise your hand if you think it's your row. Oh, okay. Okay, raise your hand if you're in the third row. The third row was the cleanest and the quietest. Sasha. All right. Do you want me to end, end the live stream? Oh, she did? Okay. I believe so. Okay, guys, are y'all ready for game time? I'm not ready. All right, we're going to play a little review game, I believe. Let's see. In the red shirt, you can come play. Let's see. Ryder, you can come play. All right. What you got right there, buddy? Huh? Bug spray? Okay. Oh. Oh, okay. Some spray candy? Oh, do you have Okay, who, which one of y'all can tell me what is the new word verse? You know what the new word verse is? It's in it's in Psalms. Psalms what? Okay, 
really fast. Go find a, a friend and ask them. Hurry, go fast. Hurry, 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 hurry. Hurry, ask someone, hurry. Hurry, hurry, hurry. Psalms 27, 13 through 14. Good job. Did you get it, buddy? What is it? Can you tell us, Ezekiel? Psalms 27, 13. Good job. 13 through 14. Good job, guys. Now, we're going to do what? Oh, I like this one just because the way y'all's faces look on it. He's the best. All right, look at the crowd, Ryder. Look at him. <laughs> All right. So you're gonna, okay. So you're, Ryder, what you're gonna do is try to wrap the your this around Ezekiel, okay? So you gotta swing it and try to wrap it around him, okay? Ready, set, go. Go, go, go! You gotta swing harder! <laughs> oh, you wrapped yourself! Oh my goodness! Hurry, hurry, do it faster! All right, guys, let me hear you scream if you think Ezekiel's gonna wrap Ryder. Oh, that was a close one. Let me hear you scream if you think Ryder's gonna wrap Ezekiel. Oh, man. Oh, Ezekiel got him. Great job, guys. Great job. All right. If you're watching online, thank you so much for joining us. We'll see you next time. Bye.